legend. He's the scientist with all the answers and all the questions. It's time for another episode of Alex's Science Corner. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, please, please, thank you. That's so funny. What's so funny, Brian? You're sitting there laughing. I think it's because you keep on trying to do the visual joke on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Alex, what's going on in the wide, wide world of science, my friend? <laughs> All right. First up, the late stuff. This has not been a good week for the various space agencies. Uh, first up, Hubble Space Telescope has gone into safe mode after a gyroscope failed. Now, satellites can go into the safe mode, and what that is is... If the satellite detects there's a potential serious problem, it will shut down the secondary systems on the satellite. It will f- retrain the uh, solar panels so that they're focused on the sun as much as possible and make sure that the antennas are aimed at the earth so that the ground controllers can figure out what the problem is and try and correct it. Okay, so with Hubble, when the gyroscopes threw this thing into... Um, safe mode. What was what was it detecting that it? Well, one of the gyroscopes is failing, or failed, and the gyroscopes are used to keep the uh, keep the telescope oriented at whatever it's taking a picture of. Okay, that's. And when one of them fails, then it can throw the uh, alignment off, and so it goes into safe mode. Now, Hubble and most satellites to do this kind of thing can work with one gyroscope. It is obviously not as sensitive as having all six available, but what they do is they'll keep some as spares and they'll keep them turned off. And then when a gyroscope does fail, they will They've got a backup they'll spin system. them up. Right. Yeah. Now, one of the problems they had, and originally this happened last Friday. It was A week Monday. ago Friday. Yes. Okay. A week ago from yesterday. This happened. And usually over the weekend, they get the next gyroscope spinned up, uh, spun up or go to a two-gyroscope mode. Unfortunately, they're still having some quirks with it, and they're only now trying getting it back up to a position where it can start taking science again. What so, What is the possibility of somebody from the space station? No chance. A, no, okay. They are completely different orbits. Uh so yeah, this is a case where if we were still flying the shuttle, the shuttle could make a... Correct. Oh, Correct. Okay. But we're now flying the shuttle. I know. Uh, we haven't had been flying the shuttle for I years. Know. Last I time know. it was, the last maintenance that was done on the Hubble was in 2009. Right. And to add on top of that, the Chandra X-ray Observatory also went into safe mode. The so who? that's The Chandra X-ray Observatory, which is a space telescope, another space telescope. That has also gone into safe mode. And the fun part about that is they haven't figured out why yet. Aliens. As of, yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should turn on your mic there, Brian. Yeah, say that again my, uh, there, Brian. Uh, did I say something? <laughs> yes, you did. I thought I heard aliens as what I thought I heard. <laughs> They okay. Must so now, whose whose telescope is that one? That's that's U.S.'s, but it's named after uh, Chandra Sekhar, uh, an Indian astrophysicist who is a contemporary of Einstein's. He and we were was just one, talking about Einstein. Yeah, and that's why I mentioned. So you've got a reference point to it. Thank you. Uh, but Chandra Sekhar was the one who did a lot of the math to define what a black hole is. Ah, did he work with Stephen Hawking? No, because he was... He was gone the, before? Yes. Okay. Yes. He wasn't a contemporary. That He was okay. a contemporary of Einstein's. Einstein's. Yeah. And, okay. So um, that's the downside. Now, the next one is, I don't want to describe it as fun. It's a uh, Soyuz uh, spacecraft tried to launch from the... Uh, from the Russian launch complex. And when it separated the boosters, something went wrong with one of the boosters. And instead of flipping away from the spacecraft, it flipped into the spacecraft and damaged the damaged the main stage of the uh, booster. So then it started to flip. And fortunately, the uh, recovery system that they have surrounding the 
space capsule that was able to pull the space capsule away from the rocket and the guys landed a couple hundred miles away from the launch site now did they did um because i was following this a little bit did they did the capsule then separate from that that other stage that had gotten hit by the yes that's rocket? uh that's what the, the so the, no no the mm-hmm. booster rocket separates and then they've got this other um, rocket that was supposed to take them the rest of the way into outer space. Correct. Uh, but and then that separates from the capsule. No. So I'm at thinking. The very I'm top, thinking Apollo here. At the very top is the capsule that the astronauts sit in. Right. Surrounding that in a cone shape is the rescue shroud. Uh, with sometimes it has a launch tower on top of it, but it's a rescue shout. And what that is supposed to do, if something happens to the rocket below it, mm-hmm. whatever happens to the rocket below it, it is designed to pull the capsule with the people in it as far and as fast as it can from the rocket. Okay. And so, and that's the very top part of the rocket. Okay. The next is the very stages below that and other stuff below that. But they, they all didn't separate. It was just this it's one. Correct. That's the whole point of that rescue shroud is to pull the capsule with the people in it away from the uh, away from the, the one stage rocket that... or whoever is having a problem. Yes. Okay. It is even designed to work if it was on the ground. So if the rocket underneath, instead of launching, starts to explode, it's got enough power to pull the capsule away from the exploding rocket. Okay, so to to actually kind of launch it then. Right, right. To a certain degree. Right, and there's a lot of technical information. There's some really cool stuff uh, about how powerful this rocket is. Again, it's designed to, if something starts going wrong underneath it, it's designed to take the space capsule as far and as fast as it can away Away from from the rocket. Okay. Uh, Now... Again, that was uh, interesting stuff about that. Uh, one of the challenging things is because of this problem, the uh, they may not have the space station crewed because the recovery ships, or this is the Soyuz spacecraft, which sits connected to the space station. And that is also the life raft or the return craft for the guys that are on the space station. The craft that's currently attached to the space station uh, has got a limit of how long it can stay up there. It can only stay up attached to the space station for 200 days. And then it has to come back down. So uh, they rotate these crafts. Yes, they rotate, rotate them. them. And so why, it's does, like, why does it have to come back down? It's because of the fuel that's on the spacecraft. Okay. The, uh, does it deteriorate? Or? Yes, it does. Okay. And there's a sp- specific reason why they use this fuel and why it deteriorates they use uh, peroxide as fuel and what it is is they inject the peroxide over a heating element and that allows it to maneuver the rocket you know aim it spin it whatever they need to do to maneuver the reason why they use peroxide as fuel is because when the vapors come off when it is used as a rocket engine fuel the components that it generates as waste are water vapor and oxygen. And so if you get a leak inside of the spacecraft, it's better to have water vapor and oxygen leaking into your spacecraft than other stuff. The downside to that, to peroxide, is it's good to deteriorate to water vapor and oxygen over time anyway. So that's what the time limit is. As the craft as it sits up there the fuel is just deteriorating and there's a certain point where they have to send the craft back down otherwise the fuel will have deteriorated enough that they're not going to be able to maneuver the rocket would they leave the station unmanned yes that is a distinct possibility right now they're talking about a couple of options one sending an unmanned soyuz spacecraft as a replacement so that they can send the other craft down and still leave the station occupied but this is right now uh some ideas you know if, if they figure out what the problem is and say that's uh, how much not time a big deal. how much time do they have to the january uh end of december early january is when the crew has to come back down so we've they've only got like about a month and a half 
of time to make that decision. And have they, so far, have they been able to figure out any... No, no, it's re- they know, they've got a very good idea of what caused it. It's a complicated thing. I saw like a 30-minute video by some engineers explaining the whole process and what is the suspected problem, but the exact details and whether it's just like a one-off incident or a possible chronic issue, they do not know that yet. And so until they figure that out, that's what's going to put it on hold. And unfortunately, the Soyuz spacecraft is the only craft on Earth right now that's, except for the Chinese, and we don't have any agreements with the Chinese. The Soyuz spacecraft is the only craft that has uh, ability to take astronauts to the International take Space US Station. Take U.S. astronauts. Uh, Russian also. I mean, that's how the Russians get it. So the Russians don't have an agreement with China either, then? No, no. Okay. Uh, the Russians and they were Chinese are not allowed onto the U- International Space Station. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, NASA by Congress's fiat is not allowed to do anything with the Chinese Space Agency. We are not allowed to work with them. We're not allowed to communicate with them. They steal technology, Bobby. I know they do. I know they do. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, it's kind of funny you say that because it is one of those NASA's, one of those agencies that has designed everything we make. You know, it's kind of open. Right. Yeah. Um, but again, it's just kind of trying to. There's. It's a political question about that. It's not for um, left for another time. Bob. Yeah. 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 Um, the, so there was, you know, there's a U.S. astronaut and there's a Russian astronaut on the spacecraft, which is kind of unusual because normally there are three astronauts on it. I thought there were three up there. No, no. Well, there are three up there right now. Yeah. There were there are two in the craft going to the International Space Station. Oh, and normally there's three going? Yeah, because, I mean, they can see three. The problem is that nobody wanted to pay for the third seat. It's like $80 million to put an astronaut onto that spacecraft. And, oh, so uh, this was a big loss for both countries. Yeah, I mean, not only it's you know a limitation on getting people up, the crew may have to come down, so this International Space Station may be unmanned for a while. Uh, it, is, it is a problem. Okay. All right, if you have any questions about these science-related stories or anything else science-related, feel free to... Feel free to contact us right now at 203-837-9924.